said, we'll uh, bring it back to the discussion here, and we've got about uh, 10 minutes before the next break where we're going to be going to the news. I heard a quote today. i see if you guys can recognize, actually not today, but earlier this week. Maybe you guys can recognize where this came from. It will be of little avail to the people that the laws are made by men of their own choice. If the laws be so voluminous that they cannot be read or so incoherent that they cannot be understood, if they be repealed or revised before they are promulgated or undergo such incessant changes that no man who knows what the law is today can guess what it will be tomorrow. Law is defined to be a rule of action. But how can that be a rule which is little known and less fixed? Newt Gingrich. No. <laughs> Newt Gingrich did not say that. Any other Seriously? guesses? Yeah. Any other guesses? No. All right. That was from James Madison. Okay. He was an officer in the Continental Congress, or Continental Army, actually, hero of the American Revolution, diarist of the debate over the U.S. Constitution, author of the Bill of Rights, fourth president of the United States. This was a writing under the pseudonym Publius. Of course, that's in uh, striking contrast to Nancy Pelosi's statement that they have to pass the bill so you can find out what is in it. Right? Well, exactly. This is part of the federal. This was from Federalist Number 62, is in the Federalist yeah. Papers, and, and that whole idea of uh, it's little avail to the people. Think about it. What good does it do if there are laws that are being passed that are so long that they cannot be read, or so incoherent that they cannot be understood? Is that not exactly what we have happening right now in Congress? It's purposeful, I think. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the, if people understood what was getting shoved down their throats, they'd probably put a st- well. We would hope maybe someday they'd put a stop to it, but making them convoluted and not understandable is the way they do it. Mm-hmm. Well, way, but then they can make us think, well, obviously only us wise and smart lawyers can run this country because none of you can understand what we just wrote, even though. We saw with Obamacare, even they didn't even know what they wrote. Exactly. Well, had and, no clue. And that other aspect of, uh, of them, the laws being changed so often that nobody who knows what the law is today can guess what it will be tomorrow. I mean, you run into this, don't you, Aaron? With operating a uh, a firearms store and a store where where people can get items that may be perfectly legal right now, but you know who knows what the law is going to be next week. Oh, I don't think you should single me out. Everybody's subjugated to that. Well, but but you see it happening all the time. I mean, there are some things that you had to pull off the shelves, right? Yeah, we've um, from the time we opened the store three years ago, there's been about four or five products we've had to pull out of the store because they've become illegal. Was that under a legislative process? No, that was arbitrarily done by the uh, Alaska to- or Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms entity. Ah, right. You forgot one, didn't you? When's that? Le- alcohol. Tobacco, firearms, and, and explosives. Ah, when is the next election for those guys coming up? We can vote them out. <laughs> exactly. Wait, there, there is, is no election? That's right. There is no election for those guys. The problem is is the rules that they make carry the weight of law and within fines and imprisonment. And they're, they have some of the steepest fines and imprisonment. Yeah, you go to jail big time for those guys. No doubt about it. All right. Where do we want to go from here? Do you want to go to talk about some of the uh, the international monetary situations and how we are uh, dangerously close to seeing absolutely every bit of money worth absolutely nothing? Real, real quick, I wanted to go back to liberty, what it means. I think I know the, th- the four of us here, one of the reasons that we even bother to come in here and blab is because we want people to understand. I mean, I think a lot of people do, a lot of people think they do, what real liberty is. I mean, we've been educated in a public school system thinking that we're free, we're, we have these liberties and all this stuff, when we don't. I mean, these uh, the alphabet soup agencies are one prime example of it. EPA, ATF. IRS, any of them, they make laws on us daily, daily, that take away our freedom. And they have no right to do that. And unfortunately, we've allowed them to do it. And we say, well, yeah, they do because so-and-so created them, so-and-so did this and that. The TSA, because uh, they passed the Patriot Act. And that is not liberty. People need to understand what real liberty is. And 
Thomas Jefferson was one that uh, harped on it a lot. One of his things that he said was, uh, rightful liberty is an unobstructed action according to our own will within limits drawn around us by the equal rights of others. So that's pretty simple. Your liberty means that you do whatever you want within the limits drawn with your neighbor. So I can do whatever I want as long as I'm not hurting Dave or Aaron or Steve. It doesn't matter what I do. It's none of your business. It's none of the government's business. It's nobody's business. If I want to go into contract with someone, it's my business and the other person's business. Nobody else's. He goes on to say, I do not add within the limits of the law. And this is the most important part of his whole this whole quote. I do not add within the limits of the law, because law is often but the tyrant's will, and always so when it violates the rights of an individual. So he flat out calls it tyranny, right off the bat. So I would say that the alphabet soup organizations out there that restrain us daily are actually tyrants. All right. Read that again, Josh. Rightful liberty is unrestricted action according to our own will within limits drawn around us by the equal rights of others. I do not add within the limits of the law because law is often but the tyrant's will and always so when it violates the rights of an individual. All right. I've been given something here from a other gentleman, uh, Aaron and Dave, that I believe they want me to play here. The whitest kids you know, Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. <laughs> something else um are you saying that you don't think the pledge of allegiance is a a good patriotic thing Dave? um maybe I, well maybe it's very patriotic but uh maybe the nazis were patriotic wow 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 isn't isn't patriotism when you um cede your your individual sovereignty and reasoning for the the greater good of the state I, wasn't that wasn't that the saying everything for the state and nothing nothing apart from it? Yep. Well, who who said that? Uh, that was the uh, the Nazi slogan. Everything for the state. And what? Uh, nothing was, apart of from yeah. Nothing apart from it. And yeah, how close are we to that now? We're long past. Uh, I mean, you look at it. It doesn't matter what party you're a part of. And yet we get we spend so much Mitt energy Romney to Hillary Clinton. That's the spectrum we got. <laughs> we we have so much. Uh, it's so much of our discussion is centered on. And you listen to any of the talk shows, whether it's Glenn Beck or Sean Hannity or, uh, you know, even Rush Limbaugh, we're constantly fighting within this spectrum that they've defined yeah, for us. The question is always on any issue, which is which is issue politics is a joke. Uh, the question is, what should the state do? Right. That's always the the range of debate. What should the state do about marriage? Right. What should the state do about what other people put in their bodies or smoke? What should the state do about who people choose to associate with? So that's the realm of debate. 
it's what's the state's role in X, Y, or Z aspect of our life. And it really, the question ought to be what? The question ought to be, why is the state involved in these aspects of our life? The state was originally, you know, the reason the government was founded in this country was just to defend the rights of people to do whatever they want to do as long as it's contractual and not harming someone else. The state was not intended to be a third party in every transaction, which is, which is what it is now. Jefferson said a wise government shall restrain men from in injuring one another and shall otherwise leave them free to regulate their own pursuits of industry and improvement. Government doesn't have any business doing it. If it says a wise government, so we'd have to say that our government's stupid. Oh, I guess you could say that. Gentlemen, we're at the break here at the bottom of the hour. It's time for the Fox News. Stay with us. We've got more to come right here on KFAR. This is Patriot's Lament. Fox News on local talk radio. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. Hot, windy conditions making it tough for fire crews across the southwest. The Wallow Fire in eastern Arizona has burned nearly a half million acres. is about 38% contained. That's enough to allow residents in the community of Alpine to return home. Meanwhile, flooding, a major concern all along the Missouri River. Anywhere from Montana down through the Dakotas, Nebraska, Iowa, and Missouri. All kinds of snow melt, very heavy rain uh, is causing the Missouri River to uh, hit at record levels over the next couple of weeks. It's going to take a while for this flooding to go away. So there's a lot of snow that needs to melt. Fox meteorologist Rick Reichmuth. And for Bruins fans, it was a beautiful day. Up to a million filling the streets of Boston to salute the 2011 Stanley Cup champs at the victory parade today. They beat the Vancouver Canucks on Wednesday night. Fox News. We report. You decide. The news you need to know from the source you've grown to trust. If it's news, it's here on KFAR 660 AM. back with more Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. Gentlemen, where do we go from here? We've got some uh, folks on hold on the phones as well. 458, talk the number if you'd like to call in. Something to read? Go ahead. There are to be no more private Germans. Each is to attain significance only by his service to the state and to find complete self-fulfillment in his service. This was a Nazi uh, writer for the newspaper who said that. And here's Robert Ley, who was a member of the Nazi hierarchy, said, The only person who is still a private individual in Germany is somebody who is asleep. Wow. Perfect. 